Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. I welcome you all to our Rajana Short Lectures. And we will be starting with a new series of sessions that includes the topic Paribhasha Sariram. So the term Paribhasha Sariram refers to the terminologies that we use across Rajana Sarira. So by understanding the terminologies properly, you will have a clear cut idea about the structural organization of the body. And it will be easier for you to decode the references that are given in the Samhitas. So we will begin with explaining what is Kandara. So the term Kandara, it can be defined in two references like Kandara Mahasnayuhu or Kandara Stula Snayavaha. Both these references have some similar, ex uh, like similar explanation because Kandara Mahasnayuhu where Kandara is by a particular structure which is explained as Maha Snayuhu. The term Maha refers to a bigger one or a stout one and Snayu refers to the tendons. So here we can define it as Kandara Maha Snayu as stout tendons which are present within the body can be related to that of Kandara. And another reference Kandara Stula Snayavaha. Here also the term stula refers to the stout one or a bigger one. So bigger snayus or stula snayu are called as kandara. So these are the basic definitions that you can use to explain what is kandara under the Paribhasha Charira. And uh, these both are the references taken from the commentaries. So according to Dalana commentary on Susruta Samhita, and Chakrapani commentary on Charaka Samhita. So these are the two references that you can quote. So let's see how they are enumerated. Shodasa Kandaraha Tasam Chadasra Padayoho Tavatyo Hastagriva Prishteshu. So this particular reference that has been taken from Susruta Sarira that is clearly mentioning that there are Shodasa Kandaraha that means there are 16 number of Kandaras and among which four are present in the both lower limbs and four are present in hasta that means the upper limb four are present in griva or the neck region and four are present in prishta or the back region so all together there are 16 kandaras in number and they are segregated into four in the lower limb four in the upper limb four in the neck and four in the back region. So here this is the diagrammatic representation where you can just uh, like recall it very easily by seeing this picture. There are four in the leg, four in the upper limb and four in the neck and four in the back region. So this concludes the enumeration of Kandara. Then we have to see what can be the interpretation for this particular structure called as Kandara. So the term Kandara may be correlated to that of the tendons which are the integral part of the muscles. What is the purpose of tendons? The tendons are that particular part of the muscle which attaches it to the bone and hence that is a very important part because it helps a lot in the locomotion. Then they are resistant to stretch but are relatively flexible. Because of that flexibility only, they are not broken off because the whole strain will be coming on the tendons while the contraction of the muscles and they are particularly resistant to that of the stretch and are relatively flexible in nature. And these same tendons are strongly attached to the bones, not only to the periosteum. We have seen what is periosteum, it is the outer covering of the bone. So along with that, it is deeply inserted or deeply connected to the cortical osseous tissue as well. Cortical means inner tissue of the bone as well. So that is how the tendons are getting inserted into the bones. So that is an important thing to remember. So by remembering that you can say Kandaras are nothing but the tendons that are connecting the different muscles to that of the bones. So that can be interpreted as a tendon. Then what is the applied anatomy behind the Kandara? So when you just look into the Samhitas, you can find certain references where a certain diseases are explained. For example, Gritrasi, Vishwaji, etc. 
at these particular references you can find that these are the diseases which clearly affects the kandara that has been clearly given in the references and you will be studying that in the final year when you study re regarding each of these particular diseases so you just keep in mind these are the clinical references or clinical anatomy references you can find from the samhitas and what about the examples you can give because when you are explaining about kandara you should also give some examples right so for example you can consider the bigger tendons of the upper limb and lower limb and uh, these are some examples that i have quoted here which includes the achilles tendon that will be present on the back of the leg you can see this green color representation here that is nothing but the achilles tendon and then tendon of biceps brachii which is an important tendon in the upper limb where the biceps muscle is present then the tendon of triceps brachii which is an important tendon helps in extension of the arm then we have the tendon of quadriceps femoris which are present in the anterior compartment of thigh so these are all examples for the major tendons or kandara that are present on the upper limb and lower limb so when you consider the back region you may consider it as the erector spinae group of muscles where the tendons are like tightly stretching back the spine so these are the few examples which you can quote for kandaras so this concludes today's session on kandara and uh, we will be following up with the different terminologies that we use across rajana sarira so the first series is concluded here thank you